16. Early radios were big and bulky. When the transistor was introduced in 1947, it enabled the invention of a popular new gadget, the transistor radio. It made music portable and ushered in the age of rock. It's not a coincidence that the transistor radio came onto the scene and became popular right around the time that rock and roll was also kind of taking the country by storm. Antique console radios used vacuum tubes to switch and amplify electricity. The silicon transistor was 50 times smaller, much more durable, and lasted a whole lot longer. For generations of kids, from the 30s through the 1950s, listening to the radio was akin to torture. You were forced to listen to what your parents wanted you to listen to. And most parents back then didn't like rock and roll. They thought it was uh, some sort of a corrosive force that would destroy their kids. For McGuinn, freedom came when he got the first transistor radio for his 13th birthday, a Regency TR1G. I only had the radio for a short time before I heard Elvis. It was a game changer for me. His 14th birthday present, a guitar. A decade later, he and the birds transformed Bob Dylan's folk classic, Mr. Tambourine Man, into rock and roll. It's hard to say whether or not I would have done what I do now if it hadn't been for the transistor radio. I really loved it. It was my favorite gadget. I think it was why rock and roll got so big. <laughs>